Hey everyone, Dale here with Pacific Sun Technologies. It's been a hot minute since I've posted a video, but it's for good reason. We've been super busy installing solar and battery backup solutions. Thanks to all of you that have subscribed to our channel and decided to go solar with us. We really appreciate you as our customers. Now today's video is one that really deserves a conversation because it has to do with the ratings of a solar panel. And I said ratings because solar panels have two. And some people realize this and some don't. But I think it's important that we do a video because we've had a lot of questions on why we pick the microinverters for certain panels and not use other ones for other panels. So I think this video will really help you understand the reasoning behind it and why there are so many variables to this and these two ratings are important. But before I educate you on these two things, please take a second to subscribe to our channel. Yeah, go ahead, click that little red button down below, and while you're at it, you should click the little bell icon too. That way, you'll receive notifications on future videos just like this. We have a lot of great, cool content coming very soon. I got some home automation stuff that's going to be happening in the coming months that you're not going to want to miss out on. Now, for those of you that live in our area, Southern California, and you haven't invested in solar, yet for your home, I honestly have to ask you, what is taking you so long? Why are you waiting? What is it gonna take for you to see the value in going solar? Because there's a tremendous value and savings in going solar, not just for the environment, for your wallet as well. And I'm here to help you learn about the benefits of it. And if you live in our area of Southern California, then you can actually get a quote from us by using that link down in the description below. We make it easy and very affordable for you to learn about the benefits of going solar. So use that link down below. We would love to have you as a customer. All right, so let's talk about solar panel ratings. Specifically, we're starting off with the STC and there's also the second one, NOCT. These are two acronyms you probably won't hear too often if you're considering solar. And I mean, we hardly ever talk about them unless a customer specifically asks. And most solar salesmen don't even know about these two ratings. But then again, you're watching this video, so you've done a little bit more research, and maybe you've asked your sales guy about this, and he's like, I don't know. And that's okay, because this video is gonna help you understand the difference. So the STC is standard testing conditions and is associated with the power rating of a solar panel. This rating represents the maximum amount of power, also known as the wattage, the panel can achieve in the lab. Just about every solar system sold in the United States uses the STC rating. When you get your quote and it shows a four kilowatt solar system DC, that's based on the STC rating of each individual panel added together. The rest of the world, surprisingly, uses something else, you know? I mean, that's kind of the MO for America. We use one standard, everybody else uses another. A lot of the world uses the NOCT rating, and that's fine. In some areas of the United States, it's actually better to use the NOCT rating. Like, if you lived in New York, you probably want to use that one. If you live in California, you're kind of going to be between the NOCT and STC rating. Now, the NOCT rating or an MOT rating is the nominal operating cell temperature or nominal module operating temperature. Manufacturers sometimes use different variations of this acronym. I've seen it in another way as well. I can't remember what it is, but for the sake of simplicity, I'm gonna stick with NOCT because it just rolls off the tongue a heck of a lot easier than NMOT. Yeah, see, I can't even say it. So the NOCT rating is more of the real world power output of a module. That's really what you're, you, you don't wanna focus on it, but that's really what you're gonna get in your off season months. This rating is still done in a lab, but with more realistic testing conditions to the real world. Now for both the STC and the NOCT, the manufacturer specification sheets always shows you these two ratings and the testing conditions they use to achieve this power rating. So the STC has kind of had an industry standard for the testing conditions, and it's usually 25 Celsius at 1,000 watts iridance metered square. Okay, we gotta take a quick side note. Iridience is the amount of radiant flux received on this surface per unit area. Super confusing. In simple terms, it's the sunlight exposure on a surface. I mean, that's honestly the easiest way to look at it. 
Anyways, the lab is using these two factors to determine the maximum potential power output of the module. This is where you get like a 350 watt Q cell module or a 370 watt REC alpha module or heck, that 440 watt LG Neon R module that we have available. You're going to want to check that one out. Did a video on it. All these ratings are the STC, which is the absolute best case performance of the module. Now, it wouldn't make sense to design around the STC. I mean, you, you look at it, it's an important factor, but for us in California, we also want to take into account the NOCT rating when we're designing your system and selecting a microinverter. Now, there's more to that and we're going to get into it. So, the NMO or NOCT rating, the nominal operating cell temperature, is tested the exact same way as the STC except they use either a higher Celsius for the temperature. I've seen it a little bit lower. Sometimes I've seen it as low as 20 and as high as 30. Most of the time, they keep it about the same at 25 Celsius. But they, also, they almost always, almost just about every manufacturer reduces the iridience to 800 watts metered square. I've seen it as low as 700. I've never seen it anything under that. So when you do that, you see the power output of the module decrease. These adjustments make for a more realistic power output of the module. Not to say you won't exceed the NOC2 rating, because you will in your peak performance months, depending on where you live. But most solar panels fall between the STC and the NOCT rating of the module. And the DC rating should always be less than the AC rating when the system is properly designed. I'm going to be going into the details of that, but it really has to do with the DC to AC ratio and it, sh and it being between 1.1 and 1.3 times. That means the DC rating is 1.1 to 1.3 times greater than the AC rating, and I'm going to explain that next. But before I do, I have to ask that you subscribe to the channel. It really only takes a second. And if this video is really helping you understand the, the difference between STC and NOCT, give it a thumbs up then. It really helps the algorithms on YouTube. Okay, so you may be asking, and you probably are, why the AC rating should always be less than the DC rating. And it has to do with the voltage of the module and sometimes the amps. For those of you that don't know, to get watts, it's volts times amps. So, you know, that's, that's how you end up with watts. So once you know the STC and the NOCT rating, they also show you voltages and amps. You can then look at the voltages and amps of those modules. This is where we start to design the system for the microinverter or a central inverter if you were using like Solar Edge. We, we primarily sell a lot at more end phase. It's, in my opinion, it's a superior product to a lot of the other solutions out there. I've done plenty of videos comparing Solar Edge to other inverters like Solar, or, end phase to solar edge and other inverter technology. Check those out if you want to learn more. All inverters, regardless if they're a microinverter or a string inverter, has a startup voltage and an operating voltage. With a microinverter, it's a bit easier to design than a central inverter because all you have to do is the math on one panel with the one microinverter. You don't have to add the panels together and then do calculations on that central inverter. Since I don't really want to bore you and make this video any longer than it needs to be, I'm really just going to focus on Enphase because that's what so many of our customers want anyways. Now Enphase has three primary microinverters, each with different AC ratings and each having a different DC rating. We try to design as close to 1.2 DC to AC ratio based on the STC and here's why. In this example, I brought up the spec sheet of the LG 370 N1C A6. This is a very popular panel right now for us. It's a newer LG Neon 2 with an STC rating of 370 watts and an NOCT rating of 277 watts. Told you the NOCT rating's less than. That's about 90 watt difference. It's pretty significant. If I look at the Enphase IQ7 microinverter, I'm going to go through each to show you why we select the ones we typically do. So the maximum power output is 250 watts. Now I know I don't even need to go into voltage and this, this microinverter is too low of a wattage for this panel because it's less than the NOCT. This means if I use this microinverter on this LG module, you would experience significant clipping as my DC to AC ratio is 1.5 
on the STC and 1.1 on the NLCT. So this is not a winning combination for this situation. Now, if you were installing on the north side of your roof, maybe you would consider this, but you know, that's your situation. But in mine, I would definitely discourage this combination. So let's move on to the next microinverter in Enphase's lineup. That's the IQ7 Plus, which has a maximum power output of 295 watts. Now this scenario gives us a DC to AC ratio of 1.25 on the STC and 0.95 on the NOCT. This is a much better ratio and we're getting way closer to that 1.2. So you as our customer would likely experience little clipping, but it would only be in your peak performance months, which if you're in Southern California is two or three months out of the year. And you would ultimately produce more power year round. I've done a video on how clipping is good when it's properly designed for the system. So check that video out if you want to understand. Now Enphase has the IQ7A microinverter. Now if we were going to pair this with, the, with this LG370, it might work out, but let's look at it. So the power output of the IQ7A is 366 watts, which gives us a near 1 to 1 DC to AC ratio for that STC and a 0.75 ratio when looking at the NOCT. At first glance, you may think the IQ7A is a better choice than the IQ7 Plus because there's no feasible way for the system to honestly experience it in clipping regardless of the site conditions. But that's where you're wrong because the startup voltage and operating voltage are going to come into play now. So we can't just look at the wattage when it's like this. You've got to then look at the voltages and understand the importance of these two factors. Now, I don't want to get into the nitty gritty of this, so I'm going to simplify it as much as I can. The IQ7 Plus has a startup voltage of 22 with an operating voltage range of 16 to 60 volts. So these, what's the difference here? So the startup voltage, that's what the microinverter needs to receive from the, from the module to turn on. Once it's turned on, the voltage can go as low as 16 and go as high as 60. So during the day, if that panel experienced any shading at any point, you know, it can go as low as 16 volts without shutting off. So it'll continue to produce power that low, and then it can go all the way up to the peak performance it has of 60 volts. Now the IQ7A startup voltage is 33 volts. That's 11 volts more than the 7 Plus and has an operating voltage range of 18 to 58 volts. So it's a much narrower operating voltage range and it has to it has it needs more voltage to turn on. So what this means in a nutshell, LG panels when paired with an IQ7 Plus is going to turn on sooner in the morning by about one hour on average. In some situations, it could be as much as two hours in the morning. I see in systems turn on as early as 5.45 a.m. They're not producing a lot of power, but that's 5.45 a.m. that microinverter has turned on because that solar module has started providing enough voltage for it. And it can continue into the evenings later as the sun sets, as much as two hours as well. So you could get anywhere from two to four more hours of solar production. So that's a tremendous amount of power that adds up every single day, even if you got a little bit of clipping in the middle of the day. By contrast, the IQ7A needs to wait until the module is providing at least 33 volts. So if we were starting up way down here at 22, well now we're not gonna be able to turn on until maybe seven, 7.30, eight o'clock, depending on your orientation and your site conditions. So that's a much later startup time. Sure, you're gonna go through the day and not experience any clipping, but guess what? That voltage is gonna also shut off earlier in the evening. So you're losing these early morning and early evening hours with that microinverter. So you have to look at the better of the two evils here. Design a system with some clipping right in the middle of the day, maybe two or three hours. It's gonna be marginal. A really well-designed solar system should have some clipping. And I did a video about that, check it out. But a system with too big of a microinverter is actually going to produce less power more than likely throughout the entire year than the system that experienced some clipping because it has to wait to turn on earlier in the morning or later in the morning and, and shuts off later in the earlier in the evening. 
In my experience and professional opinion, the closer your AC rating is to the DC rating, so if you get that one to one ratio, the worse power production you're going to ultimately have year round, especially in your winter months when the sun sits the lowest. There's just so many variables here when you're selecting a microinverter, and I'm trying to really summarize it as best I can. In my opinion, the best ratio that you can be at is around that 1.2. If you're 1.15, 1.25, that's like, those are the sweet areas to be in because you're getting a little bit of clipping and you're getting the most performance out of that system because it's gonna turn on that microinverter earlier and it's gonna stay on later. So you're really getting the best bang for your buck. You're maximizing your return on an investment on the solar system and you honestly will produce more power throughout the entire year. Well, that's it for this week's video. I really appreciate you watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please subscribe to the channel and give this video a thumbs up so that way other people can find this video. And I really hope I didn't overwhelm you. I tried to simplify it as best I could and explain it in a way that I thought made sense and how I interpret it you know, after I've taken all my certification courses. I mean, there's a lot to it. There's a lot more, but I'm really just trying to, you know, make it easy to understand why we pick microinverters with, for certain panels and don't go to the next level and why in some situations, even though another company might be offering you another microinverter that's of higher wattage, it's not a better solution in every situation. Now, for those of you interested in going solar and you live in our area of Southern California, then visit us online by using that link down in the description below. We make it super easy and very affordable for you to make the switch to renewable energy. We cover a range of solutions for you. We have battery backup and we teach you about everything you need to know about your system. You're not just buying you know, some solar system to save you money. You're, you're getting a product and a service so you understand what you're getting. Thanks again for watching. Until next time.